is tut. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Tip Tart. Today, we are finalizing, completing our little logo that we drew in Illustrator last time. We've created these basic shapes so far. Hopefully, you've managed to keep up with that. Um, and now we're going to come along and create all these shadows and nice things that gives it a little bit of depth. OK, so let's just jump right in. I'm going to do this without relying too much on the original and then just see how they compare in the end. OK, now there's a lot of uh, pathfinding tool and shape building tool in this tutorial. So make sure you've got those windows up in the latest version of Illustrator. If you select things, you usually get the pathfinder and the align tool and stuff, which is what you need. But you may not get the shape builder. Um, obviously, because there's a tool over there, so that doesn't actually make any sense, you silly bugger. Matthew, what are you doing? Um, what I mean to say is, if you don't have that, you need to go to Window and bring up Pathfinder as its own little thing. OK, now let's just dive right in. The best way to make these isn't with the pen tool, as you might suspect, because it is rough. It is unpredictable. It is not um, precise when it comes to creating mathematical curves. Um, it can be if you're good at it, but it's so much easier just to use circles that we've created last time. OK, now to do that, it's really simple. We're just going to start duplicating shapes. OK, and we're going to start using the Pathfinder tool to intersect them, to subtract them, to create the different shadow elements that we need. Let's start with the simplest bit. Let's start with this shadow along here. OK, now we've already got this curve. It's perfectly drawn, so we might as well use it again. If we hold Alt and Shift, we can drag this other shape along here and create a duplicate of it. If we do so again, we can start to see how we can create shapes that overlap pretty easily. OK, if I were to release that now, we have two shapes next to each other um, with a, pl a place where they intersect and a place where they subtract from each other. What you basically want to happen is you want to keep this place in the middle. So line up your other shape, maybe scale it up a bit, maybe rotate a bit until you find a portion that you're happy with of the shape underneath. If it helps to visualize, you can change the color because we're going to be doing that anyway later. So once you've got that section here that you're happy with, I think that's going to look quite good lined up against this. Um, all you need to do is come along to your shape, uh, your Pathfinder tool, select both shapes. And if you're using the properties window, it may not be here on the um, top one. You may have to click these dots depending on which one you're using, whether it's divide or trim or merge or whatever. The one we actually need this time is exclude. And what that basically means is anywhere where these two shapes overlap, so i.e. that small portion in the middle, cut it off, which is what we want. OK, this now groups any separate shapes together. So double click, remove the portion you don't want and you're left with a portion of shadow, which when you shift back, which is why important, it's important that you hold shift when you uh, create this shape, because then when you just hold shift and bring it back, you'll start aligning up perfectly with each other. OK, this is where the rest of our gradients come in. OK, now we have eight colors here, lights and darks. From that, we created four gradients. Now, if you wanted to, you could create another set darker than this and create a dark to darkest gradient. But what I find works well is using blending modes and opacity changes um, to create these little shadows. Not only does it give you a little bit more variation in color, which looks quite nice, but it's also manageable, a lot more manageable in terms of editing later on because you don't need to come in and edit all the individual gradients and things like that. To do this, it is best to bring up the appearance panel by itself as um, the properties panel doesn't really understand when you want to change this stuff. It doesn't bring it up all the time like you'd want it to. OK, so with your single shape selected, what you need to do is click on the opacity um, selection within inside the appearance window. This brings up a the opacity, but it also brings up the blending mode. OK, now we want to change this blending mode to multiply for shadows. That makes it darker, it takes any um, black light, Basically, any color that's closest to black, it allows to shine through. Anything that's closest to white, it makes opaque. Therefore, the darker colors shine through. However, 100% opacity is a bit strong. We maybe want to try 40%, OK? And as you can see, we've already got our first shadow looking pretty good. Um, now, that's pretty much it, to be honest. The rest of this is exactly the same thing, just creating little bits of tweaks. So I'm going to go through and start making all the rest of these shadows, OK? And then we'll come back and we'll do the highlights a bit later. Um, Sometimes it actually makes sense, like on this little um, chevron at the bottom here, to do the highlights and the shadows at the same time, which we can do now if you'd like. So holding Alt and Shift, um, Jumpy Boy JPEG is now playing Stardew Valley. 
That's nice to know. Um, we can shift these little shapes over until it intersects with something. So you can see here now the point on this corner is interse intersecting with the edge of this cutout here. We can do the same thing on the other side until it locks up again. Um, and then what we can do is start uh, subtracting these, okay? Now for these three shapes on the bottom, it's probably easier to start using the shape builder tool rather than the pathfinder tool. So let's zoom right in. We know that our middle shape here, okay, is gonna be our um, original, but we wanna create a shadowed section and a highlighted section. So we're gonna Alt, hold down Alt, and remove these extra portions on the edge that we don't need. But we're gonna leave these little bits in for now, and I'll tell you why in a minute. If we click those, that will create them as an individual shape, okay? And now if we come through and drag these two together, and maybe this bottom bit down here, and then drag these two together, and then we can come in and drag these three together, like so. We're now left with a series of shapes that are individually manageable and individually editable, okay? Which is exactly what we need. All we need to do now, because we're using blending modes, is if we were to turn this into um, multiply mode and then reduce the opacity to 40%, it wouldn't look the same because there's nothing behind it, okay? So what you need to do is actually duplicate these shapes. So select both of these, left and right, okay? Control C and Control F will create a duplicate copy pasted in place on top of them. We need to drop both of those opacities down to 40%, okay? However, the one on the right, we're gonna to turn to a multiply to replicate this shadow here, okay? Now, they may look slightly different in color, and that's because the gradient behind them is slightly different. So that's where the variation in these colors comes from, because when you're multiplying, it obviously determine, is determined by what's behind it. So that's a nice little touch for creating a little bit of more individuality, okay? On the one on the left, we're gonna do the same thing, 40%, but we're not gonna to turn to multiply, we're gonna to turn to one of the ones which lets light colors shine through, something like um, screen, maybe, um, or overlay, no, nope, overlay is the wrong one, lighten, you know, uh, soft light, that sort of thing. I think screen works best in this situation. And you can see already that it's starting to take shape, okay? Now, if you don't like that little portion there, um, you can just turn it back to the normal. So uh, you could have um, left that on this sort of standard gradient. I think I did that on the original. No, I had it overlapping on the original, so both of them are um, down there. But that's okay, we're making the same thing. Now these little extra spikes, we don't want to be part of the main image. We want them to be part of the shadow. So to do that, all we need to do is go up to um, our color palette here, just fill it with black, okay? We take that black, like so. Why isn't that working? I don't know. There we go, um, because I've clicked on the gradient swatch there. Turn those to black, like so, select both of them. And again, with our opacity window, bring the opacity down to about 10, maybe five even. 10 is quite high. Mm, let's leave it on 10 for now so we can see it whilst we're working on it. Later on, we're gonna do the same thing with this top area, but we might as well do it when we're finished with the whole design, okay? And then that's how you just create this nice little lifted shadow effect coming off here. All right, let's move on to the main portion of this then. You can see that I've got a shadow on each one of these little um, blocks coming in, and I've got a highlight on each side where the light would be hitting exposed ridges, okay? Really easy to do, looks really good as well. Let's take both of these shapes here. Let's copy them with Alt and Shift, and let's copy it again with Alt and Shift, okay? This time, however, we're gonna grab our shape by the point so they align over each other. We're gonna rotate until we get a distance we're happy with, and then align those two anchor points. Doesn't have to be perfect, it can be pretty rough. And what that does is it creates that nice curve for us without us having to scale or do anything like that. Okay, so let's zoom in to show you a bit more accuracy. Hover over that point until you see the word anchor and just drag it over that other point here, okay? All we need to do now, choose minus front or something similar um, from the Pathfinder window, delete the sections you don't need, bring them back into position, okay? On this one, let's see what 40% um, multiply looks like. Hmm, it's a bit strong for that one. What I might do is try changing the gradient color, okay? So we can change it to that darker one, which makes it a bit softer. We can leave it on the same one here. We can come in with our gradient and start adjusting the angle of it, things like that, okay? Um, 
you can do whatever you want for this. I think 40% multiply though is gonna be a bit strong. So let's drop this one to 20%, okay? Just makes it a little bit softer. Again, slightly different to there. That's not too much of a trouble, okay? Let's do the same thing here then. Grab this shape, duplicate it off, or rotate it a little bit, and bring that corner back into alignment with this other one, like so. Now this one we're probably gonna to have to scale up a little bit just so that it overlaps properly. Bring it into alignment, that looks pretty good. Let's choose minus front, okay? We can then shift this back into position and we can do the same thing, multiply 40%. How's that look? Mm. Oh, I've done it the wrong way around though. <laughs> let's fix that, shall we? Um, for this one then, let's select both of these shapes, shift them over, and then we'll just actually bring this one up and rotate it around. And then we can choose intersect to leave that part remaining, okay? So that part of um, making this like a nice quick and easy job is having all these windows open, making sure your workspace is aligned the way you want it to be. Um, otherwise, if you could imagine, you'd be clicking all sorts of different places all over the place and it would take forever, okay? Now, to create this highlight here, we actually need to create it from two shapes. So we can bring these out like so, and we can then merge them together um, into a single shape and then create our duplicate copy. Okay, if you want to, you can then shift that up a little bit so that your scale isn't quite, uh, so the edges aren't quite so strong. Uh, we can choose intersect, oh, sorry, no, um, extract, exclude um, to create that curve that we need and then remove all the bits that we don't. Okay, let's bring that back into position like so. This time we're going to choose screen again. And we're going to make it maybe 20%. I think 40 is going to be a bit strong. Yeah, that looks good. Mm, 40? No, let's leave it. Let's not break. Let's not break which ain't broken. Let's not break what's not broken. Oh, I'm very good at English. Someone told me to learn two English the other day um, in the comments. I suppose I should take their advice, really. Right, let's create the shadow then. I duplicate everything that we've got here. Okay, just get these out of the way for now, we don't need them. I'm gonna duplicate everything we've got here with Alt and Shift, and I'm gonna merge all of the shapes together until we get one single shape remaining. I'm then gonna get my eyedropper tool up, and I'm gonna come over to our shadow and select it. Let's align these two shapes, push it all the way underneath everything we've done so far, and then we can just come through and shrink this down a little bit, okay? Now, you might not want to uniform shift it, you might want to um, squish it like this. You might want to keep it uniform. You might want to do whatever you want. It's up to you. Okay. This is where it starts to look a bit strong though, is the shadow we mentioned before. Um, so I am going to make this 5% rather than 10% opacity. Because otherwise it's a bit overbearing. Okay. Um, and I might just align that with the bottom there. So it looks a little bit nicer. Yeah, that's good. Okay, the last, last thing to do then is to create these tiny, teeny little highlight down here, okay? Um, really simple to do. Same thing as before, apart from this time, we're gonna duplicate this shape and rather than scaling or positioning with the shift, we're just gonna hit Control C, Control F, okay? And then we're gonna press the right button once or twice until we get a really teeny, tiny overlap that we've got here. Then we can just choose minus front and we're left with a tiny little strip here. Now this one, what you can do if you want to, is just come up and select your brightest color as a single um, uh, block, like a single color that isn't a gradient. Sorry, I had to think then. Um, or you can add it to a gradient or you can do whatever you want, it's up to you. I think that's a little bit too thin though. Um, I'm gonna make it a bit thicker. So let's come on, get rid of that. Do the same thing, maybe about Maybe about there, about there, that'll do. Minus the front, see what we're left with. Maybe give it this this uh, this gradient and see. Yeah, that looks pretty good. What I'm gonna do instead is change that to screen, drop down the opacity to maybe 40% so it's brighter than this curve and voila, looking 
pretty good. And that is pretty much it. Um, of course, you can go through and go nuts with this, adding more and more stuff, you know, more and more um, highlights, shadows, gradients, that sort of thing, whatever you like, really. Um, and this applies, like I said, to any shape sort of logo that you want to make. Uh, I just use this sort of downloading manager one because it's nice and simple. It illustrates the point well, but it can be as complicated or as simple as you like. So thank you very much for watching, everybody. I hope you like this little miniature series. Uh, if you did, let me know. Um, sometimes the series I do are like eight episodes in length and that's far too long and nobody watches them. So maybe these short little bursts of what people are after. Maybe you prefer one long half an hour episode rather than two 15 minute ones. I don't know. It's up to you. Uh, let me know in the comments. Let me know on the Discord. Let me know on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, all that stuff. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to ring the bell. Make sure to, I don't know. Make sure to have a good time. Make sure to have a nice, fun, fun time designing logos. And I'll see you next time when we learn something new uh, on TipTap. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.